Today we're going to start with activity 2.2 responding output with a focus on light emitting diodes or otherwise known as an LED. Now an LED is a type of output. So what is an output? Now that you've had the chance to explore various types of inputs and what that microbit can detect from its environment, it's time for us to learn how to use your microbit to control output devices and see how they impact your environment. There are five different types of outputs that we are going to be learning about in this section. An LED, LED grid, LED board, the buzzer, as well as both the continuous and standard servo. Now an LED is used as an external output that allows something to light up. This is a digital output and by writing the pin to one, we're able to turn a light on on the LED. For the LED grid, we use this on the microbit to display an LED pattern. The microbit has 25 programmable LEDs that can be controlled by turning them on or off to create a pattern. The LED board lights up individually or in series. They are also detachable into single LEDs. These are great for breaking and sewing onto clothing in order to create wearable tech. The buzzer is used if we would like to produce tones. We can produce individual tones or put tones together to create a song. The servo is used to create movement. The continuous servo rotates in a full circle in either direction and we can vary the speeds of this motor. The standard servo only rotates 180 degrees and only has one speed. An LED is a light emitting dial that emits light when current flows through it. Keep in mind that LEDs are one directional. The current must flow from the pin through the long leg on the LED, out the short leg, and back to the ground on the microbit. The long leg on the LED needs to be connected to either pin 0, 1, or 2. The short leg should be connected to the ground on your microbit. To test your LED, go ahead and complete the LED project. For this project, we will be using both inputs as well as outputs. The inputs for this project will be the button A and button B press on your microbit. For our outputs, we will be focusing on using one LED that will be connected to pin one as well as ground. Now for our flow chart, we want our program to constantly check on whether the button A or button B is being pressed. If button A is pressed, then we want to turn on the LED that is attached to pin 1 on your microbit. If button B is pressed, we'll be able to turn that LED off. Keep in mind that when turning an output on that is digital, we must digitally write the pin to 1 in order to turn it on and digitally write the pin to 0 in order to turn it off. Let's go ahead and take a look at MakeCode on how we can create this program. For our LED program, we need to look at our flowchart in order to determine what we want the program to do. In this case, we are going to use the forever loop in order to get our program to constantly check whether or not button A or button B is being pressed. Now if button A is pressed, we do need to turn on an LED, and if button B is pressed, that will turn off the LED. So in no way, shape, or form should your LED turn off unless the B button is being pressed. So we're going to start off with that for every event handler. And looking at that flowchart, you can see that we have two conditions here. Now we have two conditions with two outcomes. We're not going to be using an else statement because else would just simply turn it off if the A button was not being held down. So we want to create two separate conditions. So we'll go into our logic drawer and we're going to bring in an if else statement. Now once you have that if else statement in there, we're going to need to use that plus sign to create that second condition, which is your else if. After you've created the else if, go ahead and get rid of the else statement. So here we have two separate conditions that we're going to be using. Now since we're using an internal input on the micro bit, such as your button press, we're going to go into our input drawer and we're going to use this button A press down below. We can use this as a condition by dropping it into the if statement. We can then go ahead and duplicate that block and change the A to a B. By doing that, we have now created our second condition. 
So if the button A is pressed, then that condition is met. What we would like to see happen is on pin one, we want the LED to turn on. If we press button B, then we want to see the LED on pin one turn off. So in order to turn a pin on, we're gonna go down to our advanced drawer and find our pin drawer. From here, we're gonna be using this digital right pin zero to zero. That means we're gonna be telling the pin whether or not it should have power. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that in and we're gonna drop it into our first if statement. What that condition states right now is if button A is pressed, then we're gonna digitally write the pin zero to zero. So there's two things that we have wrong with that line of code right there. One, we want our LED to be connected to pin one, not pin zero. So we're gonna go ahead and switch that over to pin one. The second thing that we need to fix is that we don't want the LED to be off if button A is pressed. We want it to be turned on. So we're gonna to need to change that value from a zero to a one. Now, if I hit the A button on my micro bit, what we should see is pin one should turn on. And that is simulating that there is power to that pin. And if we have the LED connected correctly, we should see that LED light up. Now, if we press the B button, what we want to occur is the same thing, except instead of having a value of a one, we want to change that one to a zero, meaning we're going to turn it off. So again, we now have the ability to go ahead and turn that LED on, or we can go ahead and turn that LED off by using the B button. So here you can see by hitting the A button, there is now power to pin one. And when we go and hit the B button, we are now turning it off. Now that you've completed this activity, we're going to go on and learn how to use different types of inputs to control outputs.